It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 279, entitled, It's Way Shorter Than Usual. It was recorded on Monday the 11th of December 2023. My name's Nathan Wrigley and I'm joined today by Michelle Frechette, by Matt Cromwell and James Giroux. It is, as I said, a little bit shorter. The fact is we collided with State of the Word, the address that Matt Mullenweg is giving in Madrid today. And so we ended our recording early so that people weren't feeling as if they had two things to do at once. But still, we cover lots of WordPress things. We cover the fact that WordPress 6.4.2 has been released and you need to update. It's probably unlikely that you'll have a security problem, but you never know. There's a lovely post all about the WordPress 6.4 retrospective, a look back, if you like, all about all of the things that have happened in that release and what the community think about it. A charity, WP Gives a Hand, is encouraging you to give some of your salary, some of your earnings during the week from the 25th of December to the 31st of December. PHP CS really does need your help. We talk about a post from Joost Volk, but also a podcast episode that I did on the WP Tavern. There's also a new update to the Gravatar profile editor. Generate Blocks Hacks is a lovely little plugin which enables you to do just a little bit more with Generate Blocks. Cadence AI, there's a whole load of things coming and you can see what that's all going to look like. And we say a sad farewell to David Wormsley on the WP Builds podcast. Kinda, maybe, sorta? It's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. This episode of the WP Builds podcast is brought to you today by Omnisend, the top-rated email and SMS marketing platform for WordPress. More than 100,000 merchants use Omnisend every day to grow their audience and sales. Ready to start building campaigns that really sell? Find out more at www.omnisend.com. And by GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24-7 support. Bundle that with The Hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. You can find out more at go.me forward slash WP Builds. Hello there, good morning, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are in the world. I'm going to be speaking very, very quickly today because we've only got one hour because we're colliding with State of the Word. Who knew uh, that that was going to happen and collide on a Monday? But Matt Mullenweg is getting on stage in a little over 55 minutes. So we're going to try and do this one before that time arrives. And uh, apropos of that, Courtney Robertson has popped into the comments already saying <laughs> we are the warm up band which I, I'm okay with that. I'm happy to be the state of the word warm up act. Pretty, pretty, pretty okay with that. Thank you for joining mm. us though, uh, Courtney. We're joined by Michelle. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good. Do you want me to do your full bio, Michelle? Or should we just... I do that. Uh, let's skip no. it. Let's, let's do, skip the boat. There's Michelle. She does absolutely boatloads for the WordPress community. And you're going to uh, say nothing. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't be so unkind. But also joined by Matt Cromwell. How are you doing, Matt? Doing well. Good to be here. Matt's in a brand new house. Matt is the co-founder of GiveWP. He's the senior director of uh, customer experience at Stella WP. There's a few more things in the bio as well, but I'm going to keep that one short as well, if that's all right with you. Thank Love you it. very much. And also, just just in, just in time. There <laughs> he is, uh, James Giroux. How are you doing, James? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Everything's working okay. We've had audio gremlins in the past. We were just saying, James, we're colliding with state of the word, so we're going to keep this one in under an hour. So we'll get started straight away. But there's James. James is the founder of Team WP, which is the perfect for this episode. Short bio. Uh, just one, one, one issue is I'm I'm finding on your website that it says people have to register for a webinar. So oh, really? To, yeah, if they're trying to watch on. Okay, so tell you what, do, live. Do, Just do, to this, you know that. do this for me, everybody. Go to uh, youtube.com forward slash WP builds. Over there, you will be able to find our live stream. I, I apologize about that. I do not know why that would be. I haven't the faintest well, idea. Just that um, you should know. 
Yeah, but thank you. So you can't watch it on our website, but if you want to go to YouTube, uh, you can do that. So sorry, I do apologize. Whilst one of you talks in a minute, I'll go and update what I can there with a link or something like that. Just a very quick few things. This is our website, wpbuilds.com. We've got a schedule page up. It's at wpbuilds.com forward slash schedule. You can see that this week we're doing this week in WordPress now. We've got a Wonder Suite webinar tomorrow, followed by a UI UX show with Pete Chineri on a when on Wednesday. And then we've got our weekly Speed It Up show with Sabrina Zidane. Uh, I would just like to say a very big thank you to those people who nominated themselves in our WP WordPress Silly Awards. We raised $771.50 for the WPCC. So I'm very, very grateful to all of you, and I will attempt to reach out to you individually. Okay, let's get stuck in. Uh, just a quick hat tip. I'm sure you've noticed this already, but WordPress 6.4.2 was a uh, security and maintenance release. There's not a lot to say apart from the fact that it included a vulnerability, which most likely won't affect you. But in the case of a multi-site network, there may be some situations where additional plugins could cause you to have problems. Needless to say, uh, you can update to that and you should be fine. The next one is to say that Chloe Bringman, she released a WordPress 6.4 retrospective where they talked about all of the bits and pieces that had been happening uh, in the last few months with WordPress 6.4. And there was lots of people suggesting, well, lots of suggestions about what would be kept in another release schedule and what needed to be added and what would be gotten rid of. Things to keep would be things like the WordPress community uh, wish list. Blog posts to feature major changes, release team formation announcements during the previous release cycle so that people know long in advance, a Slack channel for the release, having a co-lead, which is in a different part of the world as the lead so that it can cover the entire world in terms of time zones. What would need to be added, what would be nice to be added would be additional m minor releases between majors. An iteration between the theme, so 2024 iterating towards 2025, which is quite interesting. Um, equal focus on old tickets and bug fixes with new features. Well, that is going to be a part of one of the releases next year, is just like getting all of the, the bits and pieces in shape. Feature the pattern directory and the block editor and a whole bunch of other things. And people were asked, what would you like to add? Um, sorry, what would you like to remove? And Controversially, one of the things was release, uh, remove underrepresented release squads. But if you look in the, the one above, the bullet point above, which is what you would like to add, uh, more underrepresented release squads. So mixed, uh, mixed <laughs> messages there. But I guess, you know, the, uh, the community will have their voice. Um, I think that's what you call balance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is balance. The yin and the yang. Yeah. So uh, anyway, a few ideas there. I realize I'm sort of rushing through it all, but I'm just going to drop this one in your direction, you three, and quickly go and update my website with the link to the live. So if you just want to take it from here, anything you want to <laughs> mention in there, I'll go and update my website and you, you natter about that for a moment. I just love that they're doing these retrospectives and it does make it feel like um, the community's voice and theme heard uh, and taken a bit more seriously um, in a good way. I feel like that's been really encouraging the way that posts like this have been happening more frequently and the way that folks in the <clears throat> WP Slack have been more receptive, I, especially like I, I think I mentioned this somewhere recently, the way um, the new playground feature on the plugin directory rolled out badly, unfortunately, the first time, and they listened and they and they changed the way it, it was rolled out the second time. And the new way they rolled it out is hundreds better than it was the first time. And it was relatively quick too. So um, all of these um, uh, actions, all these posts and the way that folks are, are, are contributing to .org um, and listening to community, it's actually been really encouraging recently. I've been really happy about all of that. Nice. Thank I agree. I, I, and it kind of follows on the whole um, community summit that we had right before WordCamp US this year, which was talking about a lot of these things and how are we more transparent? How are we more inclusive? What are some ways that we can make sure that people feel like they know what's happening and um, specifically also about recognition and just a retrospective like this may not call out retro, uh, recognition for individuals, but it really does reflect on the whole process and all of the people involved. And so it's been exciting to see some of those things that 
were brought up in the summit actually coming into play sooner than you might even expect. Thank you very much, Michelle. James? I think, yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of not just what gets delivered being retroed, but how it's delivered being retroed as well and how teams work together and how people work together and seeing some of that feedback being brought out in retrospective posts like this is really helpful, especially for new people coming in. If they are feeling overwhelmed or unsure of the process and they might feel isolated in those feelings, right? Or like they're the only ones seeing it articulated in a post like this can be really freeing and allow for some conversations um, in some of the the groups and, and Slack channels that hopefully will make it easier for um, people to get more involved in the future, right? When feedback is taken seriously and actions are taken to actually reflect that. So I really like this. Yeah, I just thought it was a really neat post. Honestly, it is worth having a read. I realize I sort of haven't done it justice given the sort of constraints of time that we've got today, but it's really interesting looking back over what has happened over the last period. And also the fact that there's quite a few bits and pieces in there, which I genuinely would never have come up with. There's a lot of thought been poured into this. A lot of people have given it some time and probably I would imagine you'll find yourself nodding your head against a few of those bits and pieces. There's a little chart that we're showing on the screen at the moment, and this is when people were asked to uh, give their opinion, uh, and they ended up putting it into a chart about how they felt about coll collaborating and working on the release, so the project as a whole, I guess. Uh, one nice thing to notice is that at no point did anybody apparently say that they strongly disagreed um, in terms of, you know, strongly disagree in this case would have been a bad thing, whereas strongly agree is generally a good thing. Nobody thought that it was bad, but um, on collaborating was easy. Most people strongly agreed, but there was an awful lot of people, certainly more than half the people, slightly disagreed or were neutral. Um, the same would be true for collaborating on this project was enjoyable. I would say roughly half the respondents said it was they disagree with that or are neutral on that. It starts to get slightly more positive. When we talk about the release process was efficient, lots of people seem to think that that was good. Certainly more than half thought that they agreed or strongly agreed. And then it gets better here. The release process was well organized. Lots of people slightly agreed. Nobody um, even slightly disagreed. And then this is the nicest one. The release was transparent and easy to follow. Hmm. Yeah, lots of people uh, agreeing with that. So definitely work to be done there, but there's some nice pieces uh, around there. Yeah. Go and check it out. As someone who gets into the data on this kind of stuff, it will be interesting to see if they can have the same questions um, posed on the next release retro and compare the two and see how the process is going over time and see if we can see um, incremental improvement as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. Were you going to say something there? I apologize. Yeah, yeah. Um, curiosity, how many comments do we have on this blog? Yeah, it doesn't actually mention the number of comments. It, it just, just quickly, Michelle and James, are you finding Matt to be very, very quiet? Yes, I am. Yeah, uh, Matt, we probably have the same problem that we had a moment ago. So apologies about that. It, I, my recommendation would be either refreshing the browser or try to get the camera. Uh, sorry, the uh, the mic. Check, check. Any better? Yeah, that's perfect. That's really great. Thank yeah. you. Could you say that question again? I think uh, you said. Many, do we know I the was, numbers? Yeah, I was curious about how many comments there were on this particular blog piece because what's always uh, uh, a good indicator is like when folks, when there is a really constructive piece like this, I'm hoping that gets a lot of community engagement instead of like the other pieces that end up being controversial and we get all like a, like a flood of negative comments like that. Yeah. So just a quick scan through, it looks like four people uh, yeah. have made comments. They've made multiple comments. So there's more than four comments, but Chloe was taken out of that. So that brings it to four. So you got, um, yeah, just four people commenting. Uh, and I confess I didn't read the comments, but it's well worth having a look at. If you're interested yeah. in the process of making WordPress and, you know, following that through from uh, from release to release, then it's worth looking at that. Okay, it's called Recap, WordPress 6.4, Shirley Retrospective. Okay, we've got 45 minutes and counting till launch in <laughs> Madrid. So let's move to the next piece. This is just a... Um, well, I guess this is a, f a philanthropic thing. If you have mm -hmm. a WordPress business or you run a WordPress organization, which has a profit, um, WP gives a hand. That's the hashtag. I'm guessing you can find them on Twitter and social platforms. Um, 
wpgivesahand.com is their website address and the strap line is let's make a difference mm -hmm. together wp gives a hand mm -hmm. will you it says how great is the feeling when you not only get something back but you're also part of those who give back and the idea is that the event takes place between christmas day so the 25th of december to the 31st of december so it's that week between christmas and new year and the intention is that every company that gets gets involved with this would donate a percentage of their sales. I don't know exactly whether they're going to, you know, be strict about that, but you, any percentage, it doesn't mention five for the future, 5% or anything like that, uh, to a charity. And you can see that down here are a list of companies that have decided to do this already. So I don't know, just randomly picking a few, Amelia, uh, WP Alex, Visual Composer, WP Commerce, and they've listed out the charity that they're going to be giving to. So it's not a WordPress charity. It's not bound in that way. It's just a WordPress community effort. So for example, WP Commerce are donating to UNICEF, Visual Composer are giving to One Tree Planted, Indie Stack are giving to SOS Children's Village in Croatia. Maybe that's something a little closer to home. Uh, so wpgivesahand.com. Um, not strictly WordPress related, but it's the WordPress community doing a good thing. Don't know if any of you mm -hmm. want to mention that. Yeah. I love the ways that yeah. the community finds to give back. I think it's great, especially when it's not necessarily dictated who you need to give back to, yeah. but just that you're being philanthropic in the the money that you make and helping the world. And you know, coming from my background in give, I just love this kind of thing anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. Really For nice. Sure. Exactly. You... I mean, <laughs> the, the corporate term is cor corporate social responsibility. And uh, I think that kind of thing is really. It really does make an impact, particularly on employees. Uh, employees like to know that their um, employers are 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 generous with the uh, um, with the revenue that comes in in one way or another. Um, um, even even times when um, the particular it's such a weird time and age that we live in. Like even sometimes giving to charity can be controversial. You have a lot of diversity in an, in a company, and people have different opinions uh, about different things. Um, where traditionally, like in the U.S., the Salvation Army was a very traditional charity to give to every year. Uh, um, yeah. They don't yeah. have a great track record at the moment for being the most welcoming community anymore. Um, so uh, just kind of like doing standard uh, types of um, let's just get the uh, Salvation Army. That actually might like alienate your employees a little bit. Um, so being really thoughtful about these types of things are usually pretty, pretty useful and helpful uh, as well. Thank you, Matt. That's an interesting comment. Um, Michelle, if you want to reach out on socials, I appear to have ticked a box which said password protect this uh, feed. Um, <laughs> it, not on on YouTube, which is where most people watch it anyway, I believe. Right, so right. Uh, you, we should be fine. But that page has been updated now. So if anybody did reach out, you can tell them just to refresh now. Should you? Oh, okay. Okay. It was just me. <laughs> okay. Should you not know who you want to give to? I have a jolly good idea. What about you give to this. Um, if you cannot think of an organization which you would like to support, what about PHPCS, which stands for PHP Code Sniffer? Now, it may very well be that if you're not a developer, I am not really a developer. So this, this, is, a, this is a thing that I've never used, but I've educated myself on what it is and how it's important. This is the kind of thing that underpins a lot of the WordPress project. So it underpins the WordPress project itself, the code base, but also uh, the plugins that bolt on to, to make WordPress more usable. And it is a, a whole suite of different things which enable developers to quickly and easily check whether their code is compliant, whether there are problems with the code. And if there are problems with the code, it allows them to spot that early on and then go back and uh, amend things and get things fixed. In other words, it creates stability and security, which is you know the bedrock of everything. Now, unfortunately, um, the project has been run uh, by a company called Squiz. That's not the unfortunate thing. And primarily by one developer called Greg Sher Sherwood. But one of the one of the members of the, the WordPress community, June, Juliet Reinders Folmer, she's been the solo maintainer and the majority co-maintainer of many popular PHP and uh, WordPress libraries. Now, unfortunately, Squiz have decided to shut the door on this project 
But not only that, they've decided to shut the door in a way which means that Juliet can no longer get access to it. And so Yoast from, you, you know, Yoast de Volk, the person, not the company, Yoast has written this post on post status. And, and all I can say is he's very, very concerned about this. And he's just to paraphrase it, he says, I can't stress enough how important these tools are. Again, if you're like me and you've never heard of it, just be assured it's a bit like, oh, I don't know, putting a hole in the Titanic. It's going to sink in the end. That's the sort of thing that's going to be coming in the future. I did a podcast on the tavern with Julia. It was probably three months ago now where she outlined um, what she does, how over the years she's been doing it entirely for free, the amount of work that she's put in. Basically, the wheels are coming off this project and help is needed. Um, I'm going to hand this one over to Matt. I don't know if James, whether you're, you've used this in the past, but I'm going to hand it over to Matt. Have you used this? Is this as important as everybody's talking about? I haven't personally, but in our projects on Stellar, it's definitely used very heavily. Um, it's kind of one of those things where um, it just helps you to do better code um, automatically. Um, and it's really, it is like Yo says, it's, it's really crucial to being able to write good PHP in general, which is the uh, language that WordPress is built on. Um, and uh, th the one interesting aspect of, um, of these types of things too is in contrast to the previous one where we were talking about uh, corporate social responsibility, this type of donation is a lot different. For me, in my mind, it really, it's not for, for one in the US or in, or in the UK and other countries that do tax write-offs for generosity for, for donations and whatnot. This isn't uh, one of those types of things. Uh, but this is a way in which you um, support the open source community. I was actually personally struck just a um, couple of weeks ago. I randomly recognized that I had been using Notepad++ for like 15 years now uh, <laughs> for free. And I've update, updated it every single time they had an update. And and I just was like, I, I can't believe I've used this software longer than most of my kids are old. Um, and I uh, reached out and saw that I could donate to the author. And I just did. And I was like, because this guy's been building stuff for me for so long. And I've and he's never gotten paid from me. Um, that's the same kind of thing. We pay for so many developer tools. Uh, we pay for a lot of expensive developer tools. Um, and, um, and yet we benefit greatly by these open source uh, libraries um, and don't pay anything for them. Uh, it's it's a catch twenty two in the in in the open source uh, development space of benefiting greatly from free code, building free code, and yet at the same time sometimes like not necessarily um, recognizing um, that we how much we benefit from it and how the the relationship is a bit inverse that that we're benefiting from it a lot more than we are contributing back to these projects. Um, so I, I'm with Yoast 100 percent on this one. Uh, it's a great call out. I was glad he brought it to everybody's attention. Yeah, so if you want the skinny on it, um, Yoast gives a very, uh, you know, he gives a, a terse, not terse, a brief, that's the word I'm after. He gives a brief uh, account of why it's important and what it does. You can find this uh, on Post Status. The piece was written on the 1st of December. It's called PHPCS, a major PHP library needs support. If you want to find out a bit more, like I said, I did a, I, it was probably about 50 minutes, oh, 44 minutes, a podcast with Juliet where she really goes into the weeds of, why it matters and how it's important. There's a, there's a transcript there if you want to read it instead. Um, and she really does make the case for it. It's really, really important. It's one of those hidden things that, I don't know, it's a bit like suspension on your car. Uh, you don't ever see it, but if it ain't there, you're never getting in that car because <laughs> it'll be horrible. And the truth is that that probably will be the same uh, for WordPress, you'll have more bugs to fix. Developers will require more time to make things, so it will become less profitable to work in the industry. However, a little bit of uh, bright light. Courtney's just uh, popped into the comments and said, Greg, who we mentioned, Greg has issued a bit of code that now tells all PHP CS dependencies to use, use the new repo. Uh, quickly add to that that Juliet over the weekend, I believe, uh, tried to recreate all the repos um, and I think she did uh, a, a good job of doing that. And so probably that's what uh, Courtney's talking about. PHPCS is a part of WP Core, plugin repo, theme repo, et cetera. It ensures PHP, JavaScript, and CSS code meets standards. Uh, okay, so um, Michelle or James, anything on that? 
I have nothing to add. Okay, James? Dada, no. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen at that point. Okay, sorry. It's it's gone quiet. So, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Um, so, I don't know if, James, you were in on the call, but we're in a bit of a rush today because of this. Th there's something, Matt, somebody something is doing it. something, state yeah. of the something or other. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try and get out of his way because, you know, <laughs> you know I'm going to be ashamed if nobody turned up for state of the word because they were all <laughs> watching this. <laughs> Quickly moving on. Okay. Um, this is a nice piece. This is all about the future of WordPress in the year 2024. I love all of these pieces where we pontificate on what's going to happen. But there's a lot of good stuff in here. And it makes me very happy about what's coming in 2024. You may write this off as a, oh, it's, you know, it's sort of crystal ball gazing. But it's really not. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff that I know is coming down the pike. It's on the talkmag.io website. It's called WordPress 2024 Roadmap Releases, Common Features, and more. Um, three major releases in the coming year. We've got March, July, and November. Not set in stone, but hopefully they'll be the dates that we're going to stick to. But here's the, the bits and pieces which I think are, are of interest. Firstly, version 6.6 .6 at the moment. Um, is going to be held specifically for maintenance and general polish of software. So that's going to be a non-feature update where we just, mm. you know, push no new features. We just make things shiny that are a little bit dull and rusty. I see that a lot with SaaS projects. They seem to like take a hiatus from mm. developing things and, you know, they take the month of June or something like that just to polish it up and make it look nice. And that's a whole third of the year given over to that. So that's really nice. Um, th things which have been proposed coming in the next year include the minimum PHP versions in the plans, obviously, you know, that's a big thing. Swap the focuses for 5.6, sorry, 6.5 and 6.6 .6 round. I think what that is, is why don't we do the polishing now, right at the beginning of the year, start that way and then spend the rest of the year doing features. That seems like to me quite a good idea. Everything always feels a bit slow in January anyway. Um, implement some ways for community members to vote on features. Ooh, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder how easy anything would be to get done. Um, going from three to four major releases, I'm not a fan of that one, I've got to say. I'm quite happy with three. I think three is probably enough to manage. And mo <laughs> I'm guessing this is an American publication. Uh, move the November release to avoid clashing with US elections. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if we need to, uh, I guess it's a big thing. Presumably there's a lot of people involved. Let's just take those. And then there's some more ones. PHP, I'm sure we can agree with that. What do you think about this? Putting the, uh, the feature hold release to the beginning, not the end. I see Matt, you were nodding away. Uh, it's fascinating. That's the first time I heard them mention that as an idea, but I really love it. I think it's an interesting evolution of the way in which core has been released. So in the past, um, like for so long, um, core was so focused on backwards compatibility and stability of releases. And I do think that the introduction of Gutenberg has kind of eroded that a tiny bit in terms of like, we are pushing some new things out at a very rapid pace in core. And it does sometimes has sometimes meant at the expense of a little bit of stability, the tiniest bit, um, that, that previously really wasn't there. So I think having one whole dedicated dedicated release on that sounds really smart. I'm hoping that it also includes a lot of the momentum that the performance team has been working on. Mm -hmm. They've been doing amazing work and I hope that they consider performance as polish, um, perhaps potentially. Yeah. And also there was a few features like the, uh, the font library and things like that, which got punted into 2024 and having a, having one release where there's no new features. Maybe things like that can happen. I know it's a new feature, but it's a new, a long promised feature. So maybe that sneaks under the wire. James, just on those bits. So implementing 6.6 .6 instead of 6.5, if you know what I mean. But also, what about this one? This implementing for people in the community to vote. I, I, I love the idea of that because we all like a bit of democracy, don't we? But how, what, how would anything be done? I don't, <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's about anything being done, I think it's about unmet expectations because, okay. you know, you think about, uh, any product that, and all of us here have worked on products in the past. I think, um, as soon as you invite 
your users to vote on something, you take the power out of the product manager's hands, right? Or you set an unrealistic expectation that, hey, just because we voted on this, it's going to happen without taking into consideration whatever is going on behind the scenes, technical feasibility, you know, like some kind of campaign by a very strong-willed, strong-minded um, contingent of WordPressers who are like, you know, super focused on something that maybe isn't in the best interest of the the 80%. I, I'm not sure um, that that's necessarily the best direction unless it comes with the caveats of like, hey, let us know the community's desire or hope, right? For, for what they think would be a, a priority uh, feature. And the, the ball that get, then gets passed to the lead to be able to make that decision or, or a group to make the decision on whether it's feasible or not for a release. Um, but that would just be, I'd, I'd be nervous about something like that, um, causing more friction and um, conflict than actually being the kind of support we think it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. Kind of interesting. It could um, be gamed, which could be problematic. Yeah. Um, so the system itself has to be really done well. Um, and it doesn't have to be that, like, the, you know, the one top feature maybe gets included of many features that get released or things like that. So it doesn't yeah. have to dominate so heavily. It can just be. I do think that more community feedback is better than less. So, um, but uh, it, it can be done badly for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Michelle, there's survey. I mean, there's just different ways to talk to the community too. You know, there's surveys, there's focus groups, there's things that you could put in place that could work um, alongside of something like a upvote or, um, you know, having some kind of way to to have a say, just so that you're getting good information from different levels of users within the community without mm -hmm. perhaps having it stacked so much for, you know, the ecosystem as opposed to the general population that's using WordPress. So there's, I think there's some ways that you could do it. It's got to be very well thought out and very well executed, though, in order to avoid the gamification poss po possibilities of it. Yeah, and also, yeah, just uh, yeah, somebody uh, push, pushing their agenda to the fore by managing mm -hmm. to Corala, a subset of the user base. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. But then we go on. There's a little bit more to this article than that. And this is uh, finishing off phase two, which has kind of been drawn a line under, really. But obviously, we've still got to uh, finish off the typography management, um, the idea of being able to store your fonts in something akin to the, the media library. That got punted last year. Um, we're also going to be entering the phase of collaborative editing. So mm -hmm. think about Google Docs. And here's some interesting stuff. And much of this I didn't really think about. So I was just thinking about the ability to edit things simultaneously with somebody else, which I think in, in the case of posts and would be great. I'm not quite sure what I think about that in terms of, I don't know, um, simultaneously editing templates for things or anything like that. I'm not sure what the utility for that would be, but this is interesting. And it sort of treads on the feet of a variety of different plugins that I can think of publishing work flows. So being able to enforce, um, let's say editorial guidelines, the post cannot be published unless there's a featured image. Um, the post cannot be published unless it's been approved by a, another subset of people. You get the idea, just a whole mm -hmm. load of things. Yeah. Think of the Publish Press um, plugin by Steve Burge. That gives you an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, post revisions becoming more granular, so you'd be able mm -hmm. to not just revert the whole post, but singular blocks. That is great. Um, just imagine a paragraph, a pesky paragraph that somehow got balked and you could go back just on that paragraph. That strikes me as really great. Mm -hmm. uh, update to the media library. It does look ever so 90s all of a sudden now that I've seen some of the, the UI. And in the era of prompt-based search, uh, some amendation of search and command prompts, it says here, to account for the proliferation of prompt-based software. I don't know if that means AI. That kind of feels like that's what that means. But uh, Sure does. Can I... Can I just make a request on behalf of me? Can we leave AI, <laughs> AI just out of core? Can we just leave it out of core? Can it be an add-on? Can you get it somewhere else, please, elsewhere? Uh, and I'll go and get a tinfoil hat. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that, that's it. But I thought some of those were quite interesting around the publishing workflow. I don't know if you've got anything on those, guys. Yeah, so one of the things that I, you know, as you look back over the, the whole list and things that you were just talking about is that when we 
move things forward in WordPress, I think we need to re- continue to remember how new people coming into WordPress and using it for the first time, right. what is their interaction with it? Because I, I mean, we've really been seeing this aging up of the WordPress user base. And I want to make sure that we continue to bring people um, into WordPress, not just from my generation, but from my daughter's generation and the generation behind her, you know, Matt's mm-hmm. younger kids, that kind of thing. And if it, if we over, uh, uh, you know, if it's overwrought with so many things that it becomes difficult to just step into and use, then we're not doing a, we're doing a disservice to the possibility of continuing to grow the, grow the platform or at least maintain what we have um, for WordPress because if, if the newer people aren't going to use it, it it's going to age out and it's not going to be something that continues to be a part of the fabric of the internet. Mm-hmm. I do like these publishing workflow changes. I could do with a bit of that in my life actually already. Uh, I think some of that could be really good, but I'm not sure how it would work for me other than posts and pages possibly. I don't think I'd want it to in- encroach on anything else, but then again, I, I, Michelle, as you said, the words aged up, I took a look at the panel and thought, what the heck? We're, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely, we're not on the younger side, are we? We're not on the 12 year old group, are we? And you're right. It's a group that I very rarely think about. I basically just think about me and the people that I know, but you're right. We want this thing to keep going, don't we? And the yeah. 12 and 15 year olds, imagine what we're competing against. Those UIs in some of those, you know, mobile platforms and things, they it's, just, oh. It's odd to think of the younger demographic as being underrepresented in technology. Yeah. But they kind of, but they kind of are right now. We need to remember them as we continue to, you know, improve things, not yeah. just for those of us who need the font to constantly be bigger. Thank you very much. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've got the uh, perfect <laughs> antidote to that. Michelle. It's called new glasses. It <laughs> removes I, the font I, problem. Yes. But Several remarkably, the font, pro- the font problem comes right back as soon as I take them off my face. It's, Absolutely. it's, not, it's not a permanent fix. No. Uh, okay. okay, plenty to come in the year 2024, thankfully. Uh, nice that the project is in certainly not stalling in any way. There's lots to, lots to talk about about the future. Uh, just to let you know that if you're a Gravatar user, you'll notice I'm keeping these very brief. Your profile has been updated now. I'm constantly amazed by how many things use Gravatar. I sort of mm-hmm. sign up for all sorts of SaaS platforms, which have got no connection at all with WordPress. Notice my avatar's not right. And then I change my email. It's like, oh, there it is. We're obviously using Gravatar. You've got, a, you've got a new way of interacting and some enhanced privacy settings. But, you know, I think we're all using it for one thing, that little round image and pretty much nothing else. <laughs> but there it is. It's got a new panel update. Uh, for those people who use Generate Blocks, this lovely little thing has come along. It's called GB Hacks, and it's an add-on, uh, and it's free at the moment. You can use it for five sites for free, and it just adds some much need. Well, not much needed. You can do everything that is done without needing it, but it makes things um, makes things much more easy in Generate Blocks. So you can put patterns directly inside the block inserter, which is quite nice. You can set the default headline block to be um, the, the, the thing that which is always instantiated when you click return into a new block. So rather than going to a paragraph block, um, generate blocks text equivalent is called the headline block, and it serves as an H1 through H6 plus paragraph. And you can make that the default, which is quite nice. It also um, allows you to, um, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, it, if you've got a group block and you want to turn it into a generate block container block, It'll do that for you as well, and a bunch of other stuff. And it's free, so I thought I'd mention it. It'll be in the show notes tomorrow. Uh, However, I suspect that at least two of the users on this, uh, sorry, two of the panelists on this show probably aren't that uh, familiar with Generate Blocks, but they are familiar with this. Uh, Cadence WP, they've been touting the AI features for quite a while. And uh, been doing a good job of sort of dripping out, uh, you know, little tasty nuggets of what's coming. And, and finally, we're here. We've got an intuition now of what's coming. Uh, you can find this at cadencewp.com. And uh, the, the post is wordpress.solutions forward slash cadence dash AI. There's a video which will explain it to you in great detail. I'm just going to quickly scroll down the page. An awful lot to see. It's a nicely put together sales page. But this little part of that page sums it up nicely. Um, so you've got the quick start, which enables you to use AI, put in a prompt and it will quickly design uh, a website for you. It will get you on stock by giving you guidance and customized 
recommendations based upon uh, specific information. Check this out across Cadence. So I don't know if it's got some sort of compatibility, you know, with other websites that you've built or something like that. Uh, you can find patterns using it. You can get inspiration by uh, letting, it says here, let AI spark your creativity with 20 starter contexts. You can do the, the usual stuff that you can do with ChatGPT, you know, generate text, uh, improve grammar, tailor the text, and update the tone. But uh, Michelle or Matt, I'm going to throw this one in your direction. Give us the uh, give us the elevator pitch for Cadence AI. What's the uh, what's I'm, the reason we? Were I'm going to defer to Matt first because I want to hear okay. how he talks about it. Nice. Uh, w one thing I'll say first is uh, just a tiny bit of context. Like what I love about uh, Ben Rittner, uh, the the guy behind uh, Cadence is he's very um, careful um, and intentional. And you'll have noticed all of 2023, there was this like gold rush for AI products. Um, yeah, there really was. There definitely yeah. were some folks who were doing AI before 2023. And, and um, but then in 2023, it was like, everybody needs AI. And at the end of the day, a lot of them were just like, oh, I can type a sentence into a prompt and it will give me something. That's nifty. Nifty is not something that customers are going to be clamoring down the doors for. Um, <laughs> and, and so many of these big products, they're like 20 bucks a month for something that was nifty. And I'm just kind of like, eh, that's why you're starting to see the, the AI usage dip now, uh, finally, because the, the luster is past. Um, but this whole time, um, Ben and the Cadence team and Stellar leadership um, did not jump straight into the deep end of AI. Instead, they're really careful and they're like, why, why do customers even want this? What will this actually do for them? Um, like who actually cares at the end of the day? Um, and that's why you see what you see here is that we don't want to just be able to put a prompt in the block editor. We want to be able to generate a whole landing page or a whole website for you based on what you say. Um, and that includes images, that includes layouts, um, that includes text as well. Um, and, and, and the result that's coming out right now is really exciting. Um, like one of the things that Stellar is talking about all the time is trying to make WordPress easy. Um, and that speaks a little bit towards what Michelle was saying earlier of how like, yes, um, you know, we are aging up in the WordPress space and the, the younger generation, honestly, one of their big right. expectations is that yeah. stuff is easier. That's what they actually expect. They don't actually always expect like amazing, phenomenal UIs. They just expect it to work easily and intuitively. And WordPress sometimes, unfortunately, really doesn't do that. Um, so that's the goal and the aim here is that what we're, what we're building with Cadence AI is going to make building pages intuitive um, and a lot more uh, straightforward um, and that you actually get the results that you actually want um, uh, from these tools. So I, I'm excited to see it, but do notice that it is pre-release at the moment. Yes. Um, not, um, it's not 1.0. Um, there it is right on the bottom. Yep. Um, Michelle, thank you, Matt. I'm just super excited about it. Our, our cadence audience is very excited about it. If you go in, you know, we have several thousand people in the cadence Facebook group, for example, and they're clamoring for it and we get direct messages every day. Like, is it released yet? Is it released yet? So it definitely is one of those things that people have been looking forward to. Um, and, and, you know, as Matt said, I think anything that makes it easier, if you can focus on your content and your design becomes easier and you can figure out how to personalize it easier, which is what you can do with Cadence, I think that that's where people, like, it can be as easy as you want it to be, or you could make it as complex as you want it to be too, right? So some people love playing with the CSS and the codes and things like, you know, and the colors and the hex codes and all those kinds of things. And you could do all of that with Cadence. And so I think making it easier is really going to make a difference. The next generation, we were the internet generation. The next one is the app generation. And so, whereas it used to be that apps needed to replicate what happened on the internet, now the internet is going to have to start replicating how things look on an app. And I think that Cadence is doing a lot of that right now. It looks really amazing. Just the ability to sort of type in and get um, custom pages and, just, you know, the content mm -hmm. is bespoke to the kind of query you put in. So. I'm guessing that the intention would be, for example, if I indicate strongly that I'm a gardening company that I'm going to get text, which is kind of adjacent to gardening. Plus and images. Imi yeah, I was going to say, and images that, you know, mm -hmm. flowers and plants and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, not mm -hmm. um, caterpillar trucks, for example, <laughs> um, that kind of thing. And it just, I was saying in a couple of weeks ago, when those kind of things happen, especially if you're pitching a website to a client 
and you just want to show them more or less the wireframe, having content which is adjacent to the finished product really gets them on board a lot more. Mm -hmm. They can see it. It's not Lorem, and it's not some sort of 600 by 300 placeholder. Um, it gives them an intuition as to what's going on and how it's all going to look. Um, as always, you know, it's a starting point, isn't it? Nobody's su sort of suggesting, well, not yet anyway, that you click a button and your website is finished. There's an awful lot more to do. But uh, Matt, do you know when the uh, when it comes out of, well, I'm going to say beta, it's called pre-release. Do you know when we're anticipating full release? It comes out when it comes out, man. It comes out when it's ready. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. That's I, fair enough. I think we're, we're, we're really aiming for quarter one, but uh, okay. no yeah. promises. It's not a cake. We don't have. We're not following a specific yeah. recipe for this. No, yeah. that's good. I like the analogy. Any any time anybody uses the word cake in this podcast, <laughs> we're all happy. Uh, I only wish I had some to share. Uh, yeah. James, anything on that, or shall we move on? I know time is. Um, no, I think I think uh, Matt and Michelle have both done a great job of of outlining it. I I bring it back to that underrepresented group, which is the younger generation. Um, absolutely agree with Michelle on that. Um, the thing that you were saying, Nathan, as well about, um, con, you know, working in context, I think one of the things that's really neat about this, especially things like content generating right in that spot where you're designing, when you're in that flow, either as a user or as a builder, being able to have that, that, you know, content generated or those images populated. It's such a huge win. Yeah. I've been doing, um, yeah. you know, some some design work recently, and you know, you've got to take time out in order to find and source the right images for a particular block or something, and then you've got to think about your content and you've got to get that right. And like those blockers can get in the way of, you know, the flow of what you're doing. And if we can remove those through tools like Cadence AI, I think that's a really really helpful thing for for users um, to make the web more, more um, accessible to more folks as well, right? Um, as far as like people who maybe get scared of building a website because, you know, they might have a design idea, but they have no idea what to write. Right? Oh, yeah. But they have the content. Yeah. At the, be design. at the beginning of lockdown, I sat all three of my mm -hmm. kids because we, you know, we were isolated and no school was on. And I sat my three kids down and thought, I'm going to teach them how to use WordPress. Honestly, it lasted less than an hour. Uh, mm. It was it was hard, and I mm. thought this is a fruitless struggle. This sort of stuff, th this changes that paradigm. You sit down, mm. and within three minutes, you've got something akin to a website which you could actually publish. Will it be 100% exactly what you want? No. But will it be a lot further on than I gave them, which was you know a black header with some white text and then a big... <laughs> Yeah, just some kind of uh, well, a, a rubbish website, basically, mm -hmm. that they couldn't figure out what to do with. This just gets them across that little hump. And churn is the thing. If we can get rid of yep. the churn, um, WordPress will become a lot stronger. Right, I'm very conscious of the time. So we had a few bits and pieces. I'm just going to very, very quickly roll through them. I just wanted to draw attention to a piece that Justin Tadlock wrote. Um, he's talking about styling the details block the details block is a sort of like a, a, a one accordion you can open it and close it and it hides something that's hidden behind it usually text uh, we use it on the the tavern to to uh, to make the transcripts available you know that's a summary uh, details block there and uh, and he's written a post about how you can make it look pretty and it is it's nice just simple little core block that you can now do this kind of thing with so go and have a look at that uh, be on the alert, tell your clients, uh, there is now somebody who has a special place in Hades who is sending out email pretending to be the WordPress team or the WordPress mm -hmm. security team. The intention is to get them to install uh, a plugin and who knows what that plugin is going to do, but um, my expectation is it won't be good. Um, and so just be mindful, you know, your, your clients are very much going to be using WordPress, I'm sure. It's quite likely, I imagine, that this will be going out just spraying across the internet. It's got a big target painted on its back these days. So if it says WordPress security team and it's coming into the inbox of somebody that doesn't know about WordPress, that feels like a click to me. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly possible. And just tell them, just like the bank, if, if, they, if somebody reaches out to you, don't click the links. You go and find it for yourself. Uh, or right. best fit, contact your developer. Contact you, right. dear WordPresser. 
Um, so that's just awful. I wish things like that didn't happen. Uh, you can educate them in obviously seeing where the email came from, but maybe that's a step too far, but you know, these things are easy to do, aren't they? I'm going to, I'm going to cry now. Uh, uh, David Wormsley, uh. David Wormsley. What a, what a lovely chap. He's been doing the podcast with me since literally episode one. He's done more than half of them, uh, but he decided he's no longer going to be using WordPress. He's decided he wants to build uh, websites which are based upon just HTML and CSS. And uh, so we're parting ways. So much like Paul Lacey, he is now a traitor. <laughs> uh, he's he's going to go on my newly created traitors page. Uh, he's not. I love him a lot. Um, it didn't take long though. We parted ways at the end of recording the podcast. We parted ways. And then about a week later, he, he emailed me and said, do you want to do another podcast? So, so I said, yeah, what's it about? And he said, building websites, but without WordPress. Um, so we're going to launch a new podcast and it's going to be all about oh, building, um, websites based upon the HTML and CSS spec, not getting frameworks involved. We're going to chuck into the WP builds feed for a few weeks just so that you can get a flavor of it but it's kind of bye-bye but not really the heck yeah. david <laughs> getting all this sympathy and then doing that but i just wanted to memorialize the moment yes. for me it's a really big deal it's mm -hmm. like seven what is yeah. it we started in 2016 quick bit of maths so that's like 28 years we've been doing this <laughs> and, and uh and i'll miss him oh. a lot but he'll be back so i won't miss him for very long bye david mm -hmm. traitor uh, uh. <laughs> at the end of this month, Ali and Emin steps away from the underrepresented in tech project. Aww. And so um, I'm very, you know, looking at the future of that and how to kind of repivot. I've been doing some work on the side around, around it's going to go forward. It's going to be great. Um, but as a thank you to her for her time, I, I had a cameo done by one of her favorite, like, um, actresses from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, who writes, says, hey, um, Michelle wants you to know you're dead to her. <laughs> See, you're always raising a level. That was so good. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, oh, I'm, I like the way that you took it in a in a very negative direction. Now, that's good. That's very very British. Oh, that was, that. She goes on to say, "Of course, she's good. so you know." But yes, we've been having a good one. Let's break. Okay, I think maybe we've got time just for a couple of extra things before we have to knock it on the head. Normally we're 90 minutes, but today we're going under 60 minutes because of this state of the word uh, is happening in about five minutes time. Uh, bravo to Patchstack. They have now become a member of the Open Source Security Foundation. I confess, I don't know um, a great deal about this, but the fact that they've written a blog post about it, I'm guessing they're celebrating this as a bit of a win. So bravo to them. Um, I, I know that Spencer was in the comments. I'm sorry, Spencer. We did want to deal with this in more detail. Matt uh, put it in. And Matt, you've got like two minutes if you want to get into this one quickly. Spencer talked to Syed Bolke. No, I thought it was great. Um, uh, a lot of folks who are paying attention to product um, often uh, r resort to Twitter to complain about automotive products. Um, and th that's the trend that I think uh, that precipitates an uh, interview like this. Um, I think warranted or unwarranted, um, the automotive Syed in particular has gotten a lot of public criticism from the WordPress community. Um, and um, I think that having the opportunity for him to go into detail and and Spencer really doing a pretty decent job of like not letting them not answer questions um, in this interview, I thought was really good, really helpful, really useful um, overall. I do think that sometimes the conversation wandered off a little off subject a bit, and sometimes Syed really didn't answer completely or uh, or to the to the nose. Um, so I'd like to see more of Syed in public uh, and more of him talking about what they do and why they do what they do. Um, because it's really the WordPress users who are out there being vocal about um, these things. They're not wrong. They have good, valid criticisms. But you don't see a whole lot of the typical um, business owner complaining about opt-in monster stuff or others. And that's a lot of Syed's point is that like, um, it's really other product owners who are who are being um, very vocal. Um, but yeah, thank that's you. My take. Yeah, that's great. So uh, you can check this out on YouTube. I just want to add. Oh, please do. Um, I I maybe not um a warning, but like just a, a caution 
to product folks in WordPress um, about being careful not to venture too far into bullying, right? I've seen some of the commentary and like there's this, you know, like parody Twitter account and things yeah. like that um, that are really, I know they're, they're maybe joking. I think James froze. Yeah. Is that me? Looks that, that way. Yeah. Looks like, yeah. yeah. It, unfortunately, this platform is built with the. It's got this. Uh, Maybe the, funny uh, stuff. Matt, uh, James, you um, you you froze. You said they may be joking, and then you froze. So I, I don't know if you can rewind a bit and carry on. Mm. No, no. I think James. Are you back, has... James? Hello, you... hello. Are you back? There you yeah. Are. Sorry, I'm... James. You froze. Michelle, I know you've got to go. I have to run. I'm sorry. I've got to go right. run a. Uh, what about you, Matt? Are you going to run as well? Or I'm good. You're I'm good, good for a minute. We'll do a few more minutes then. James, do you want to reiterate sure. what you just said because you I'll basically froze? Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate Bye. it. Yep. Um, yeah. No, I was just saying. Like, um, I've been been watching, you know, the the Twitter commentary and and. You know, it's it's one thing to to criticize, you know, an approach, and it's another thing to take it into personal attacks or to, you know, villainize someone or villainize an entire company and 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 all of that. And like, there's a parody account. There's on Twitter, like, you know, all these different things that I think venture a little bit too far, maybe into bullying. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's not helpful for WordPress. It's not helpful for new product owners or new people trying to come in. If they see this like collective bashing of someone, and that's not to say you have to agree with the approach or agree with um, things that, that go on, but we can do it in a constructive way. And I think that's much more WordPress um, and much more what I would like to see than some of the things. And I think Spencer's approach of at least having that conversation and holding his feet to the fire, whether Syed answers all the questions or not, uh, I, I think it was very brave of Syed to even go on um, a call like that, considering the kinds of comments and things that have been said, uh, especially in the last six, six months. Whoa. Oh. By a specified amount in profit, every <laughs> My, uh, it's your AI, it's uh, it's, oh. build, it's building you a website as we speak. Siri, I, Siri, I will... not happy. Yeah, that's, that's right. The internet does not want me to be talking. <laughs> that's not it, apparently. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna raise you the WP Builds Facebook group image, which mm. is just that. Nice. Just stick with that. Do that, yeah. and nothing goes wrong, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, be polite always. But let's go back to the, the article in question. So this is WP Launchify is the name of uh, Spencer's YouTube channel. You can obviously subscribe. This was published actually, oh yeah, 6th of December. And it's called Syed Bulky and Spencer Foreman discussed the future of WordPress. And uh, I know that time is fast running out. So we'll just raise that as something that everybody can watch. And thank you, uh, Spencer, for doing that for us. And to finish us off, rounding us off today uh, with one minute to go, uh, Matt has brought this initial version for WordPress 6.5. What were you? What yeah, were you uh, Rich Daber shared out uh, uh, an article summarizing uh, roadmap stuff for 6.5, and he highlighted this one in particular. Um, and this is essentially a demo of what uh, dynamic uh, content could look like in Gutenberg blocks. Um, and um, I was really impressed with this idea and this concept because this is something that basically every page builder that's not Gutenberg is doing in one form or another. Right. And Cadence in particular, all of their blocks um, have a dynamic content uh, type functionality in them. Um, and um, it, it just feels like this actually, like basically trying to relate uh, metadata across different types of posts and things like that feels like something Core should be doing in one form or another. Um, and so I was really encouraged to see um, this uh, development here. I do think it's gonna be relatively limited. Uh, it's gonna you know, probably stay pretty focused on the types of content you do with normal uh, core blocks and things like that. Um, but it's a very encouraging uh, move in the right direction. Uh, and obviously also the way it does like image one, image two, image three, that's obviously something that somebody customized in one yeah. form. So yeah. You can extend this functionality for yourself um, 
really imagine uh, using it for your clients in different ways, um, like uh, being able to say feature image one or feature image two or like a business shot or portrait one, portrait two, uh, things like that would be really cool uh, to be able to enable your clients to do those things rather than having to go dig through the media library every single time they need an image. Yeah, I completely agree. It, it, it almost feels bizarre that we don't have this in Gutenberg and every every implementation of Gutenberg, so whether that's Cadence or its commercial rivals, they all have a different way of doing it. And if you flip mm -hmm. from one to the other, you have to figure out a new way of doing it. And so having some sort of standardized way, which normal WordPress users can, can use off the bat, yeah, I will link to that in the show notes as well, but it's a, uh, it's a GitHub uh, track and uh, I'll put the link in the show notes, which will come out tomorrow. I really appreciate it. I know that we are incredibly rushed today um, because of State of the Word, which has probably already started. Um, I do apologize for the fact that it's a little bit shorter than normal. I forgot. <laughs> Michelle kept me up to date with that. But we'll knock it on the head there. Uh, thank you. We'll be back next week. It'll be our final one of, will it? Yeah, I think it'll be our final one of the year, unless we're going to go on like Christmas Day or something. Uh, <laughs> so, so it only remains to do the, the friendly little wave. If you guys fancy giving us a bit of a wave, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Matt. We will be back next week. So take it easy. See you then. Bye.